Hey guys, just another quick video um, about more about servicing and for the DIYs. As I've said before, we're not trying to um, encourage you too much to do your own servicing or to not do it. It's just information. Um, obviously, you don't get everything in two minutes or five minutes or ten minutes. It's just information, little snippets here and there, as much as we can give you. To, so hopefully you're more equipped to, so if you are servicing your vehicle yourself, you pick up a few things that you may not have or so you decide hopefully you can find the right people to get the service work done anyway so if you are doing your work i'll just give you a quick idea under the engine bay the sort of things obviously you need to check um, when you do a service you need to check the brake fluid level that shouldn't be dropping down too much it doesn't usually i don't see leaks on prados so we're talking prados here that's what we specialize in that's what we see every day so we're always only talking about Pradas. This is a 150. Obviously, we see a lot of those. That's most of the service work we do. Uh, 120s, are, they've gotten a bit older now, and most of the guys are taking care of that themselves. Um, obviously, we still see a few. Um, so, brake fluid, it's gonna go down slowly with brake pad wear and come back up when you replace the pads when you push the pistons back. But other than that, you shouldn't see any leaks or deterioration there. This one's a manual, so you've got your clutch uh, fluid next to it, same deal. Um, you can have a look for leaks underneath the floor inside the vehicle. It will can start leaking down there if the seal's leaking. And same deal on the slave cylinder. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you probably need to do a bit more homework. But um, obviously the air filter, if it, depending on what the vehicle's been used for, whether you check it every service or change it or clean it or whatever, that one's a make it up as you go depending how it's been used. If it's on-road only, it just needs replacement every 30,000 Ks and you can't really clean it. There's nothing to clean on an air filter that's been on-road. And if it's been off-road and there's a lot of dust, it probably just needs replacement anyway, which is why it's really a DIY thing. You can save money by doing your own air filter and MAF sensor cleaning, and then you don't have to pay me to do it. Working our way around, obviously you want to fill up your washer bottle so you can clean your screen. Keep it on your coolant level. Um, should be obviously between the low and the full marks, um, you know about the water pump You can just have a look on the inside of the time belt cover to see if there's a bit of spray there and Telltale sign most obvious of your water pump leaking No point checking your oil level because you're about to change it all. We're talking about service work here. Timing belt's due every 150,000 um, Check your battery make sure it's secure um, You should check the electrolyte level every now and then they've got these indicators on top. That's a bit of a guide bit of a gimmick you know I'm not too excited about those they can show it's bad when it's good and it's good when it's bad so don't go by that batteries generally won't use too much fluid and I like to avoid topping them up because if you top up one more than the other it, it's uneven between the cells so you know but if it needs topping up it needs topping up but hopefully it goes down evenly and you top it up evenly all good when you've got a couple going down more than the others you may have a problem so make sure the battery is secure and also the terminals. Uh, probably the biggest cause of cars breaking down over the last few decades is loose connections and battery terminals and stuff. People get slack and they don't loosen off the terminals properly to push it all the way down before they tighten it up. And rather than being tight on the terminal, it's tight to itself as in, see that metal sort of comes together there right in the centre of the picture and it'll be tight there but not around the terminal. In this case it'll be tight on the terminal because they have been pushed down all the way, which is good to see. So try and keep those clean. There's also a cover that's meant to go over the top with your extra accessories. Um, sometimes you've got to cut out some extra plastic or whatever. I suggest you do that and even put a zip tie over it to keep it on there. It's fairly important because the whole vehicle is negatively earthed. That is the negative, the black side, see over here, goes from the battery to the body of the vehicle. The vehicle is negative earth. The whole vehicle is the black side of your battery. So anything on the vehicle that touches the positive and any part of the vehicle at the same time will cause a short and a spark which can blow fuses, damage batteries and batteries obviously emit explosive gases and they can explode as well and that ain't fun when you get showered in battery acid so you want to avoid that, keep that cover on you can see your uh, power steering fluid level on the 150s without too much to do um, sometimes they get a very slow leak at either the pump or the rack and you don't see these leaks because the rack is just leaks slowly into the boot I'd suggest if it's slow, it's not worth the big expense of replacing it. Just monitor the situation and top it up. Obviously, if it gets worse, you need to do something about it. Same with the pump. The pump's gear-driven, mechanical thing, and the seal that leaks will leak into the engine all, so you won't see the leak. 
But if you're wondering why it's dropping down slowly, that's probably what's going on. One of those two things, both very minor leaks that will stay that like that probably forever. It's up to you if you want to go and spend the hundreds or thousands doing those repairs or just monitor the situation. This fuel filter here, they say change it when the light comes on. There's a pressure sensor on top there. Um, my suggestion is change it every 40,000 Ks <coughs> and you don't need any extra fuel filters. You've got that and you've got the one at the back that's constantly flowing and look, there's a lot of filtration going on here. So that's basically the things you're gonna check under the engine bay. Um, probably missed a few things. Like I said, I can't fit a lifetime in a few minutes, but I hope that's helped. So this one happens to be a, a 160K major service. And if you are bringing it to me and you wanna save some money, then you can do things like this. And I love it, this is beautiful. Look what this guy's done, he has removed the bash plate for me that's great so that front ARB bash plate opens it up for better inspection that needed to come off I believe to get these front bash plates off which we need to take off to change the front diff oil so for those changing the front diff oil I'm sure you can figure it out but the filler plugs up there just behind the drive shaft middle of the picture they're not usually a problem getting those out 10 mil hex and the drain plug is this one at the bottom here um, so depending if it's been over tightened whether it's going to be a problem getting it out and depending what it looks like like that's got a bit of mud on it so it's hard to tell but we'll clean it up and have a look at the material and if it's if it looks the slightest bit dodgy or it's hard to get out and it gets slightly damaged we will replace it quite often we replace front diff drain plugs when replacing those so having all the bash plates off on a more major service allows us to have a good look around check for leaks and deterioration in here hoses and stuff which hoses are generally fine you know um, as usual the main things you want to check on the Prados are the front wheel bearings for any play or if you've heard any noise um, we'll just replace them at two to two hundred fifty thousand K's um, because that seems to be where they start playing up front lower control arm bushes so those bushes in there if you're doing your car yourself there you go, so that one's got quite a split in it. I don't know, I'll try and hold this still for you in the right spot. See the rubber where it says 486, the part number over there, that's where the rubber starts just to the left and it finishes to the right and it's split around about almost halfway through, just under halfway through. So that'll slowly work its way through till it's all the way. Let's have a look at this side. Yeah, that one's about the same splitting from the left. Um, <clears throat> I've explained in other videos what generally causes that, what I've seen. And um, you need to just, like I said, if you haven't subscribed and got your notifications on, you're just gonna fall behind even further. And you've got some homework to do watching all the other videos. From now on, we're gonna try and upload them all on YouTube. That way they're all in one spot. The only other videos is the, the specialist sort of group, 4 before Diesel VIPs, which has got a lot of actual videos on how to do stuff. Um, obviously we can't cover decades of experience and how to do things in a few videos but we can cover a lot of stuff on Prados which is relevant to Prado and Hilux and 1KD so on this vehicle we're doing a 160k major service thanks very much for taking that bash plate off that saved us some time and you some money and allows for a better inspection of everything up underneath inside the vehicle so we'll get on with the service hope that's helped so if you're doing your own oil changes or well, that's what you want to do it's pretty simple pretty well the same procedure on most vehicles but look you do want to get specific information from engine to engine because there are some engines that if you drain the oil too long you can have problems etc etc so here we're, we've got a 1kd FTV Prado and most engines traditionally this is the procedure um, I always remove the dipstick and the oil filler cap from the top before raising the vehicle so that way you're not going to forget to put oil back in people get distracted crazy things happen so that's what I recommend you do just to save yourself any grief um, and you can see the sump plug there right in the middle of the picture pretty much you can see the engine sump and there's a plug there 14 mil again you can get yourself into trouble over tightening those or leaving them too loose or forgetting to um, you know tighten them up the torque spec on this I mean I reverse engine hit it and worked out that my feel I like it at 35 Newton meters so 35 newton meters works by the book i looked it up after i did that and it said 34 so funnily enough simple as that plugs out oil's draining 
into the drain tray, which is good, which is a bonus. Obviously, you know, mo most recycling facilities in most um, suburbs or areas, you know, traditionally the tip, it's a recycling centre and most of them look, I don't know, they probably vary. The ones I see, some things you can take for free and oil's one of them because they actually get paid for oil, so it should be free. No point double dipping is there, but I'm sure some places do it. If you want, you can uh, let us know if uh, yours does that. But anyway, dropping the oil out, just thought I'd show you that. Pretty straightforward for the guy sitting there going, well, I'd like to do that, but I'm not sure. Well, it's simple as that, but whatever you do, don't forget to tighten up and don't over tighten it. If you're not sure, 34, 35 Newton meters on the 1KD engine. So if you want to change your own front diff oil, what you want to do first is get in there, give it a clean, spray some brake cleaner in there, get an old toothbrush or something, you know, this is for the DIYs, there you go. Give it a clean in there, try and, you know, you need to be able to get the tool in there all the way, you know what I mean? So anyway, I'm just giving you a demonstration. Give it a good clean out, clean all the mud out. You can't get a 10 mil tool in there if it's full of mud. What's gonna happen is, going to go in halfway and scrape all the mud and push it in and you're going to wonder why you don't get it in halfway and then you're going to go to crack it loose and wonder why it slips okay so that's the other part of the problem besides them being over tightened the other problem is people are not using quality tools so we've got a there's some quality german made tool i don't know if you can see that where are we Doesn't really matter anyway, but it's been around. I've been using that over 20 years. Not, anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter. And the bar we're using, I reckon it's two and a half foot long, because that works better. Now I'm a bit awkward here because I've got the phone in the way. So let's see if this, there we go. So make sure that's in all the way. And probably uh, that was a good one. So with a decent bar and a decent tool, they do crack up and really easy. People carry on about you know, about it being an issue, um, I don't see issues really, unless they have been over tightened and or previously, previously damaged obviously makes it up. It's already damaged and then they put it back in, that's why we don't do that. If I get one out and it's not looking pretty good, we're going to put a new plug in there. 20 bucks, whatever, you know. Once you've done it and you don't let the wrong people work on the vehicle, you never have to replace it again. Probably the washer every now and then. I mean, it'd be wise to replace it every time. I've seen all these washers, you don't need to, but you know, that's an option for you guys. So we just go on and um, crack loose the filler plug also. I always recommend having a filler plug. I'm just gonna, still got the engine all draining, so I'm just moving the drain tray over so we can catch both lots of oil at the same time. Have the filler plug loose, so A, you know you're going to get that out. Look, it's not a problem either. This is just wise practice on all vehicles because if you've got a filler plug that's stuck, you don't want to end up with no oil. Um, so fill the plug out and you get to see it's dripping, so you know it was full to the correct level. And it allows the air to go in when you take the bottom plug out. So instead of going gloop, gloop, gloop and splashing everywhere, you just get a nice clean so I don't know if you can see in the picture but I'm doing it I'll check the video later and if it works out happy days top plugs out just taking out the bottom one now and that oil looks pretty good too so that's good it's just due to be changed every 160 so that's what we do always looks worse in the bottom of the drain tray but um, oils can look quite clean when they're flowing out anyway <clears throat> so we've inspected this plug. We we'll give it the uh, give it the okay. Put a new washer on it. Plug can go back in. Drain plug. You only need to let it drain for a few minutes. Um, a few drips isn't going to make any difference. The oil's fairly clean anyway. I'm going to show you what. I think the spec on these is it's around 55, 59, I don't know. Look, I forget. Too many torque specs. Generally, I use them. Something like this, I don't need to, but pretty sure it's very close to 60. I use 60, I'll tell you straight. 60 works for me, and I'll show you 
what that looks like. All right, watch this. That's it, done. No overtiming, just 60 newton meters. So I don't need to use a torque wrench, I just do, because it's there, I use it for other jobs. And you just know 100%, that's where you're at. Yeah, we've obviously seen them a lot tighter than that. Look, it's just crazy how tight some people do things up. It's just not required. Um, when you're finished, any sort of oil changes, worth spraying on some brake cleaner sort of product or something like that, just to get all the oil residue off, simply because we don't want anyone thinking there's an oil leak there, you know what I mean? So keep it all clean, that'll all dry up, and uh, there's no thoughts of there possibly being an oil leak. I'm going to get the oil and fill up the diff now. For those that don't know, obviously in the filler hole, until it overflows, take your filler out, when it's just dripping, when it's full, then put your top plug in. Uh, I think the top plug's more like 49 newton meters. I'll use 50, I'm just leaving numbers. One newton meter isn't gonna make a difference on a diff plug. So uh, 60 on the drain plug and 50 on the filler works for me. And the rear diff, I'm pretty sure the same, 50 and 50, cause uh, yeah, that's what we do. Alright guys, so we've um, drained the front engine oil, checked the oil pickup of course, explained in other videos, you need to watch those, check your oil pickups, any car that you can see the oil pickup, check it, um, front diff oil's drained, replaced the washer, refilled, talked to spec, all cleaned up, uh, had a bit of a check over the vehicle, now we're at the rear diff to drain the rear diff oil, um, like always. Crack the filler first, 24 mil. Usually it's not an issue, so I thought that one was a, not a problem. You can see a bit of a sweat around there. Probably needs a new washer, eh? Usually make sure there's no dirt. You'll know if the, if the, um, if the socket goes on. Usually these are full of dirt, so you need to get a flat blade and just drop all that uh, dirt out, give it a scrape around. Okay, so draining that, you need to clean the magnet on the drain plug. Let that drain out. Once again, not too bad. These are not an LSD, the 150 Pradas. They're an open diff because they've got traction control. So once again, the oils do stay fairly clean. So we're going to go and give that a bit of a clean up and refill the oil. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you want to use a torque wrench, as I said, I'm pretty sure the spec's 49 on this filler and the drain plug. I oh, assure you can use 50 even numbers and you won't have a problem. We just do it by hand, so if you're happy to do that. I find it very hard to believe you'd be able to pull a thread on one of these. You just have to be way too heavy handed. Um, but I have seen one with a damaged thread, I think where they must have over tightened and just pull, starts pulling the threads out, it's ridiculous. But you'd have to be, just, I've seen around it off and all, there's just no need for it. Clean the plugs first, make sure you can get a grip on it with a single hex socket. If you're not sure what that means, go and Google it. Google's your friend, right? Single hex socket. We'll get to doing videos on that, but you know, we've got limited time prioritizing. All right, guys? Hey guys, so while the uh, rear, rear diff oil is draining, we've just changed this rear fuel filter that's above the tail shaft. About halfway along the rear tail shaft, bolted to the floor with two 10 mils. There's other videos on that if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's due to be changed every 20,000, so it's due on this 160. So that's done. We've changed the rear fuel filter. And now we'll go around and refill the rear diff.
All right, so the rear diff oil's changed. Um, we put a new washer on the filler plug because it did have a sweat around it beforehand. Gave it a good clean up, that'll all dry up. Won't look like it's got a oil sweat or leak anymore. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and lubricate the drive shaft.